One of my favorite uses for the iPad is definitely photo editing. It's a really fantastic way to interact with your photography in a physical sense and a benefit of instant social media apps like Instagram also makes the iPad a perfect place to share your work. I've been a long time user of the desktop version of Lightroom for photo editing and I've always enjoyed that workflow. But the second I started using Lightroom CC or just Lightroom as it's now called for iPad, I knew this is where I wanted to keep things. So for the last two years or so, I pretty much edited every Instagram post, every small freelance project and every holiday photo on here. And today I wanted to share with you my workflow for doing so. So if you like iPad and aesthetic tech videos, be sure to subscribe and let's get right into it. I usually have an idea of bulking all my Instagram shots for the week and occasionally I'll do just that, but more often than not, I'll just take a few of what I want and then I'll leave it there. This awesome cyberpunk art book turned up today though, so I'd love to take some photos of that. And I wanted to grab some more general shots of my iPhone 12 Pro Max for another post I have planned in the week. Okay, so first thing, now I've got my photos, I'm going to bring them into the iPad through USB-C. So I'll put the memory card in there pop that into the side, and then we go straight into Lightroom. It should say, yeah, device connected, and it will slowly load in all of my photos. This reader isn't the quickest out there, so it's kind of why they load in quite slowly, but it does work and it's nice and small, so that's why I generally use it for the iPad. So let's grab my iPhone photos, these ones here, they will look good, and I shall grab all of these. Ignore those. Here's the photos I took of the book, so let's grab all of those too. I took some of the tape as well. And then we're gonna hit import and bring those in and it will copy those over. Okay, so once those are copied, I always pull this out because I don't like it hanging about. Okay, so now the photos are imported. What I like to do is just have a quick flick through them to make sure they look okay. And if I've got any repeats, I'll just see what the difference is and then hopefully bin off the ones that don't really need to be there. So uh, let's look at the photos that I like the most recently. I always quite like these ones, so let's start here. And Lightroom's got a ton of stuff you can start doing straight away to make things look really nice. But if you use Lightroom like I do, you're probably used to having preset packs. I've been using the Mango Street preset packs, which is another YouTube channel for like a really, really long time. But um, I'm actually really happy to announce today that I've been working on a bite review preset pack for ages. I've got lots of like tests here, but I'm finally ready to show it to you all. It's called the bite review preset pack and it's here and it's got four presets which are all kind of designed for the photography that I take for technology. So if you like the stuff I've been doing on my Instagram, then these are the presets that I've been using to make them. We've got bubble tea, uh, lemonade, matcha and ramune. Uh, of all of these, they all serve different purposes, but Ramune is pretty much my go-to for absolutely everything I do. I occasionally use these for other styles of things, but Ramune is the one that I always, always use. And as you can see, when you apply these, they all look slightly different, but they're not always perfect off the bat. Like I would say this is now too bright. So let's hit done there, go to light and bring that down ever so slightly, especially the highlights already quite far down. And that's already looking a lot better. So that's kind of how the preset looks. I'm quite a big fan of adding grain to my photos. And you'll see that if you use these preset packs, you can't probably see it on this video, but I always crank the grain quite a lot, especially for my Instagram posts. Once I've done that, I'll um, actually come over to the cropping tool, go to four or five, which is for Instagram portraits. And then that's kind of how I'll set the photos up and then I'll hit done. And that's the sort of thing I post on my Instagram quite happily. So that's pretty much how I edit photos. And because I've got one that I like the look of, uh, what I'll do is hold my pen on it and hit copy and that'll copy all the styles and I'll apply it to these two because I think they're quite similar in terms of how they look. I'll hit apply and Lightroom will apply it to there too. And we can just see there's the original. Uh, it works quite nicely on here. This one's a bit dark now I would say, so I'm gonna bring up the brightness overall and the contrast a little bit. And that should make things pop out. And again, what I'll do, just get that four or five on there, make sure things are sitting in the middle as best I can, something like this. And again, that's another photo I would happily post onto my Instagram, which just looks really nice. And it's the same with this one. I would make that Instagram worthy as well. We've got a few other things here as well, which aren't quite the same. So there's a lot of white in these photos and not a lot of that in here. So what I'll do is load up this one first. This is a picture of inside of the book. We'll go over to the part review preset packs. We'll just have a look at what else we've got on here. Um, lemonade looks quite nice, quite dark. 
Matcha is probably a bit too much and Ramune probably alters those blues too much. Remember, this is what it looks like initially. So we don't want to change it massively. So I'm going to go with Lemonade here, even though it looks quite dark. I'm going to bring up the brightness pretty considerably. And then hopefully things will look a little bit more natural to how they were. I still find that purple isn't, the blue, sorry, isn't quite where they need to be. So in the color thing here, they've, they've got something called color mix and you can kind of change things back to how they were. So if I want the blues to be more purple, I can just pull that back in here. So it looks a bit more how it did initially. And there we go. I'm quite happy with that. I'll actually rotate this so it's like that. Again, pop it in four or five so it's Instagram ready. And then I'll have something like this, which again will just make up part of this set of photos for my Instagram post. Let's go back. I'm happy with that edit for this. So what I'm going to do again is copy those and apply it to these two. This is the thing with preset packs. They're fantastic, but they don't always give you exactly what you're looking for. So you do have to play with them still until they're right. Uh, let's roll with that for that one. And yeah, this one's way too bright. And let's just rotate that again. Go to four, five and there, something like this. This is quite nice. And they all match as a set of photos as well, which is really cool. So if you want to post them on your Instagram or anything like that, they'll look good. Um, I took some photos of my iPhone as well. I'm already not huge on these ones where it's facing the front. I think they look a, it looks a bit weird, especially with that bit of blue, but these are quite nice. Um, so let's dive back into the bite of view presets. Have a look what we can do. Okay, Ramune, again, looks great off the bat. So does Matcha. That is a bit dark, uh, bubble tea is probably a bit too much. So I'm gonna go with Ramune, that is my favorite one and it's the one I use the most. And yeah, there it is. So that just makes everything, gives it that kind of look that I really, really like. I think in tech, there's this absolute drive to minimalism, which makes it almost look a bit sterile, but I still think there's lots of opportunity for nice colors in tech still. And I think that's a great example of it. Um, so that's without and that's with. I would say the grain is potentially a little bit too much on here because it's such a close up photo. So I'm gonna pull some of that out. And there we go. So that's one of the iPhone shots. And let's have a look at this one. Um, let me go to the bite review preset back. Uh, okay, Matcha looks pretty the nicest on here. Um, I mean, let's have a look at Matcha. Let's bring up the brightness on there too. And the contrast a bit. Actually, I'll take it out. That actually looks quite nice. So it looks something like that. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. But again, that's a half preset and half me mucking around here to make sure it all looks good. So that's how I edit photos on the iPad. What I would normally do then is bring all, I'd uh, export all of these and then pop them straight into Instagram or something like that. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put them into the examples folder I made earlier. And then I'm gonna come over to here because I actually edit a lot of different styles of photos. So while this is what I would do for technology and that sort of thing for my own personal Instagram, for the more lifestyle shots I take, which is a lot for my freelance work, I would go down a different route. Now, usually I would jump straight to the Mango Street stuff for this because I really like how some of those look and some of my presets were based off kind of some of these looks. I think that one's quite nice, but what I'm gonna do is show you that you can use those bite review presets as well for lifestyle stuff. I think the matcher stuff is really nice for a lot of it especially when it comes to skin tones, it, it kind of gets that quite right. So um, I like that one the most. Um, Ramune is a go-to of course, but I think Matcha for that is just nicer. The, the rest are potentially a bit too much. So hit done with that. Don't really need to do anything there. Maybe bring down the highlights because his arm's a bit bright. And then what I'm gonna do is uh, come out of there and I'll copy that onto this photo because it's pretty similar. And then I'll just open that up to make sure it looks okay. It might just bring the brightness up a little bit so his face is a bit more shown and the shadows. But yeah, that's what kind of what Matcha looks like. This is another shot, which is potentially a little bit more suited towards, you could just go through on here because I quite like how this looks already and just bring out the contrast, bring those highlights down, shadows up and have a play of that. So it looks something like that. But let's go back to import. And then we can actually have a look, see how those bite review presets look as well. Again, Matcha just looks really nice, especially on the skin tones, really nicely done. 
bubble tea makes it look quite different to how it looks. Obviously all the greens go, but it's still actually quite a nice look, especially if you're looking for that kind of autumn-y vibe. That's quite nice, but again, I think it's gonna have to be matcha for me. Romu and A is probably a bit blue for it, so let's go with matcha on that one. That's looking nice. For this style of thing, this is usually where I would pretty much, because it's so colorful, sometimes presets make it look a bit odd. So sometimes I would just edit this manually and just roll with that. Um, sometimes even the Mango Street ones look potentially a bit much. Um, oh, I quite like that one. The landscape one's quite nice. But let's just show you how the battery presets look on here. I actually think the bubble tea one on here looks really nice and the lemonade, it just makes it a bit more autumn-y. So let's go with bubble tea. Uh, and bring up the brightness a bit. Yeah, that's kind of nice and autumn me. And again, I would usually, even for clients, I kind of crop photos down just so they're kind of perfect for posting straight away, either on Instagram or, you know, their LinkedIn or whatever. That's just a nice way of doing it. So that's a, another good example of how nice they can look. This is another photo I took for a tattoo shop I was really happy with. Um, I think on the photos that I handed over, I actually used Mango Streets for this. Yeah, I used the Moody one and just brightened up a bit because it just makes it really nice and crunchy. But again, let's have a look and see what the old bite review ones can do. Um, again, yeah, quite nice. I quite like all of them actually. The lemonade could be pretty good. But matcha is just, yeah, it's just good. It's better on those skin tones. I think it just looks a bit nicer. What I'll do is add in a ton of grain for something like this. And I might even uh, add to the color and just bring up the saturation ever so slightly so it's got a bit more of a punch to it. That's really nice. And again, I would bring that down to Instagram size, uh, four or five, and then export it, something like that. See so yeah, again, a really nice example. Uh, and this last one here is another kind of lifestyle-y one. Let's jump straight into the view presets. If you don't like the way one looks, so bubble tea, I quite like, but I think it's a bit full on. I'll go to done, head over to light. I'll bring those highlights down so this t-shirt's a bit more visible. But I also think the blue's a bit much. If you come to color mix, and then go to uh, the blues. I can actually just pull the saturation out, something like that. And it just, because it was about here, and that just makes the whole photo look a bit more subdued. I could even change the skateboard a bit, so it stands out a little bit better. Something like that. Yeah, something like that, super nice. But there you go, that's how I would go about editing all these photos. When I'm done, I would export them all. Uh, for my own Instagram, I export them at pretty much at full quality, but I'll take the image quality down to 80. You just don't need it at full percent if you're on um, Instagram or anything like that. But if I'm exporting it for a client, I'll make sure it's on 100% and send them over. But yeah, that's pretty much how I go about editing photos on the iPad. One of the reasons I like it so much on Lightroom on here, especially when you're doing small shoots like these, is it's always backed up to the cloud. So wherever I go for it now, it doesn't. I'll have it. So PC, back, phone, other phone, other iPad, whatever, someone else's computer, I can just log in, grab all my photos, grab all my presets, and they're good to go. For all the points I love about Lightroom though, it's obviously not perfect. I think a lot of people who are fully into the desktop version of Lightroom will miss a lot of the organizational features and some of the more in-depth edits like photo stacking and HDR workflows. Even for me, it's not always my absolute go-to. The shoot I showed you today was obviously tiny, but if I'm taking photos of something all day or I've got hundreds and hundreds of photos from a shoot, I'll fire up the older version of Lightroom on desktop just because it's easier to deal with the huge amount of photos that I usually have. I think Lightroom CC is a great creator workflow, but I'm by no means saying it's perfect for photography professionals. Before we leave things though, I wanted to say you don't need to have Lightroom to get a good photo editing experience out of the iPad. There is a free version of it you can use, but it's pretty limited. But don't sleep on the built-in editor in the Photos app. This can help you make some images look really great and it's a good place to start if you're a beginner. If you did want to dive a little deeper into photo editing and you don't really want to go for Lightroom, I used Visco for a good while and I really enjoyed that app. The presets in there are all really nice and it's a good deal cheaper than Lightroom too. Of course, there's loads of other free apps out there which are great places to start too, so don't feel like you need to spend money to get good results. Anyway, that's how I edit all of my photos. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you want to grab the Bite Review preset pack and edit your photos in a similar way to me, then I'll leave a link in the description where you can pick them up. It also helps support the channel too, which is really great. If you think there's some other photo editing apps that I should check out, do let me know in the comments below. I always like to read about that. Leave a like on the way out too, that'd be massive, and I will see you all in the next one.